Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. I think I was like 20 years old when I did one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm 42 right now. <laughs> Kids, don't try this at home. That's a dead rat, dude. Since we don't have a chain uh, to pull this motor out, we use the, one of the seat belts. I got this was made to save a life. It's also made to pull a motor out. Look at this guest appearance right here. What's up? Jeez, what, what kind of day is it today? Got it's red, chopper day, man. Red pants, it's chopper not the day. boots. Wait, the boots are looking fresh. Oh, thanks. So we're here, day two, building battle. Motor's already out by the time I got here. Motor's out of this one, and then Josh. My favorite part of the build. Just what? taking everything apart. What's that chop rating right there? That's, uh, that's, uh, what is that? About, uh, about 20, 20,000 RPM. <laughs> This is a super clean donor car. It really is actually. I mean, it had a bunch of rat poop in it, but once that got vacuumed out, uh, the body's super straight, no, no rust or anything, and extra budget. Are they gonna use this jank asshole tendril? The drums? No, they're getting no, rid of the them. whole rear end. Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Josh, you using this old rear end? It'll hold? Yeah, buddy, all we gotta do is weld that diff. Hey, rock and roll. Well the diff and thoughts and prayers. How many clutch kicks do you think it's gonna take to grenade that thing? Can I, can I just say this guy, made one of the cleanest sawzall passes I've ever seen. Is it the, is look, it the cleanest one? Look how clean that is. I was gonna say, is it the cleanest one you've ever seen? Cause we're so used to Brad's sawzall cuts. Yeah, and Sufi hasn't fabricated in 10 years. So. Look at that sozo cut! I mean, this Yay. one, this one's a little, uh, it's a that one, by, by cut two, that's a pretty laser straight line for a sozo. I mean. Sufi's like, y'all are the weirdest people yeah, I've real, ever real. met. Your, your rust is like our polish, so. Zach, <laughs> what do you got popping over here? I am uh, getting these dudes some music set up. And since we got a bunch of these Cove speakers lying around, I figured we'd hook them up. These are awesome. We use them all the time. Like a portable speaker that actually has some serious bump to it. It's got two modes. You got a base mode, normal mode. You get up to eight hours on a single battery charge. You get up to 30 feet connectivity range. It's actually water resistant too. So when you spill crap on it, uh, it doesn't destroy it. Ask me how I know. We just drove the Oldsmobile up to uh, Las Vegas and obviously it doesn't have a stereo in it. We just like jammed one of these up against the windshield. And nice. That doesn't have a roof and we were able to jam. So, Service Kyle, song. can you tune us? Yeah. Oh. All right, check it out, check it out. So this is normal. Let me see that, let me see that. that. I love that you can actually see it. You can see it shake. So yeah. That's pretty dope. So, I mean, if you guys want one of these, you can go to uh, coveaudio.com slash hoonigan70. Get one of these commuter speakers for almost 70% off by using the code hoonigan70. Apparently, you get free U.S. shipping, too. That's pretty good. Hit that link in the description. We got it all down there for you. Make it super easy. coveaudio.com.
check it out. So what is this thing? This didn't come out of the car because your car came with no motor. Right. We picked this up in Fontana. Uh, it came out of a 2007 Silverado 2500 HD. It is a LQ4 motor. So they have different versions, LQ4, LQ9. This is the lower compression version. The LQ9 is the higher compression version. It's got really good flowing heads. So if you want to boost this thing, these heads are pretty dialed for it. But even though we're not going to go the boosted route, we're going to keep it naturally aspirated throw a cam in it, maybe swap out the lifters because we are gonna be possibly banging limiter on this thing. So we're gonna use the crap out of it. Probably 86 this fan, we'll go the electrical fan route and give her a little, you know, clean job and stick her in our 88 Camaro. John, John was taking notes. Taking notes, man. I'm a drifter, so taking notes. I'm a real builder, so. Oh! You know, I gave my kid uh, an LS motor to put in his little Tonka truck. So he's doing that now. He's, he's doing, doing that now? Yeah. What? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Savages. I'm not. I'm not taking any side in that conversation. All right. So now you're cleaning the motor up a little bit. What are What are the rest of your plans for the day? I just want to like take apart some of the things, like get these valve covers off, get the heads off, start inspecting the lifters, all the valve train on it. Uh, Alex is going to start on getting the rear end out, so we can start welding the diff, doing our gear swap, and all that good stuff. And I think we should be able to. That would wrap our day pretty much. I mean, if we can do more. Might even start prepping for a cage. Wow. Alex, you hear that? Are you down with these plans? Not only am I down, I'm super excited. <laughs> I can, I can pull tell. this rear end out. <laughs> gonna weld that bad boy up. Then we're gonna remake some uh, the lower control arms. We gotta make a torque arm, and then we gotta make a new pan hard bar. And then not only that, we gotta open up our BCA coilovers, and we gotta try to adapt those Mustang coilovers to our Camaro. Yeah. Stoked to see what you guys could do with that. Hell yeah, dude. Super, you gotta slow down. <laughs> I don't know slow over here. You don't know slow? I don't know slow. We I only could, go fast. I could tell, man. Uh, I'm gonna rough cut all this out of here, and then I'll start doing the clean cut so it, it's not all jagged and nasty. So that's the plan. The roll cage, hopefully I'll get something mocked up today and figure out how to use that vendor you guys got. I think I think Jamo's got most of the work. He's got a lot of work cut out for him today. Like what? <laughs> so this is a lot in the motor, wire it up. So you guys are running the K24 boosted, right? Boosted. Okay, so that's why you guys are building Boosted it. Life. Boosted is life. That's right. Boosted is life. That's your CD09, right? Yeah. So how are you guys planning to mate that? Are you gonna get an adapter kit? Well, yeah, we got an adapter plate for this. Okay, so, I don't so even know if it fits. No one does. Did, no one has done this. No one's put a K series in a 350Z. Yeah. Okay. It's not like taking a Chevy or putting a Chevy motor in there. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> That's old. It's gonna take a little bit of guesswork. We were supposed to be builders here, you know? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and number each and every one of these per cylinder because I don't want to take this one off and put it back over here. You know, they all evenly wear in a certain uh, place. So I'm going to either I can I'm gonna put them in this box right here and make sure they stay in the same place that they come out in. So when I go and reassemble the engine, if I use those rockers, at least the same ones go to the same cylinder along with uh, the push rods, which come out right here, down in here. So Push rod so I got all of the rockers out of the heads as well as the push rods. Got them all 
organized in my nice box right here. They are also ordered to where if I decide to use the stock rockers and like upgrade the trunnions, at least I know each side that they go on. But before I can do the heads, I kind of wanted to inspect down here. This is looking pretty clean. I started looking at a lifter down here and it looks pretty good. We're gonna pull these heads off and see where the rest of our engine's at. common problem in a lot of the LS heads is they when they crack they crack in between the valves and you know cause you know a head gasket failure cause coolant inside the cylinder and whatnot I'm looking at a little hairline crack in between the valves right here and I'm really not liking it you know it doesn't look bad enough I've seen worse I think we're gonna go ahead and possibly risk it might be a little one there too but uh, you know I'm confident this should last you know throughout the competition hopefully we can get that head gasket to seal <laughs> I'm gonna weld the diff up. I try to get as much material inside the gear as possible. So we're gonna weld up the spider gear. Weld up the spider gear so they don't move anymore and that, that will essentially lock the diff in place. She's ready. She ready? Weld the gears together because the gears are the same material. If you just weld the outside, sometimes yeah. the casting will actually chip off. The weakest part of a weld is the edge of the weld, and it could actually just take the casting off. So, weld the gear first. I mean, that's what I do. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but Sorry. that's the way I do it. You guys ever build one of those things? The, what do you call those things in the, in the car? The bar? The hoop? Um, you guys ever do that before? That's like, that was like, that was like my job a long time ago. You know the one from Yeah, it never came. Yeah, it never came. It hasn't come. No. Oh, you got that a lot, man. We're hoping we can borrow you a still from building a cage. Can you pay us? How much you want? A thousand bucks. A thousand dollars? A thousand dollars. Damn! All right, you pay me 200 bucks, I'll help you. Oh, shit. Let me, let me YouTube real quick. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube real quick. You guys, you guys figure it out, man. All right. All right. So how do you bend it? Oh, you haven't made it yet. All right, we got some BC Racing coilovers, so the BR series. These are actually for a Ford Mustang, 05 to 14. I think that's a fifth gen Mustang, but, um, BC doesn't offer any coilovers for this car, so we're going to try to adapt these Mustang coilovers to our concrete. So I'm about to open them up for the first time, and we're going to see what the work's going to be to get them on here. Cardboard. I'll just give that to them. There we go, bugs. Okay. We got a front. Look at that bad boy. These are nice. They come with pillow ball uppers. We got a nice machined aluminum top plate to mount to your strut tower. This is really nice. There's no bushing in here, so it's just solid. So you're not going to get any kind of flex or play in a bushing. It's got a nice steel bottom, so we might be able to weld on that if we need to, to fit it to our knuckle. Got adjustable dampening, soft to hard. I think it's 32 way on these, so it gives you a lot of adjustment. Then you got your full height adjustment, so you can raise your coil over or lower it. And then you can also adjust your preload on your spring. You might want to adjust that if you're really serious about going to the track or drifting or anything like that. All right, right now I'm waiting on some parts for the engine. So I'm going to back off the engine a little bit. I think I'm going to work on the diff. Um, Alex already started working on the front suspension. So this is what we got so far. It looks like these little, these are the factory top hats that fit onto our car. Explain to me exactly what you're doing right now. Okay, so we got our coil over here. Okay. We gotta somehow make this work with this. Okay. And as you can see, this is a this is a pretty hefty boy. This is a big unit. <laughs> this is a big unit. Um, I tried cutting into it, 
But I said, you know what, if I'm gonna take all the time to like cut a plate and replace this big round thing on here, uh -huh. then I might as well just cut a whole new plate. Yeah, because if we cut both of them and we only welded this top plate, that means it's not still grabbing the bottom, which is definitely not going to be good. Yeah, so just take this big, uh, big R316 plate, adapt our pillow ball mount okay. to this plate, and then that's our camera plate right there. Okay. So Camaros come with factory adjustable camera and caster adjustment. Dope. From the factory. So okay. We'll try this, we'll see how long it takes, and um, go from there. For a Gymkhana grade car, suspension is like key because we're gonna be, there's a combination where, you know, there's gonna be corners where we're not gonna drift and then there's gonna be corners where we're going to drift. I'm not sure exactly like the layout just yet. We haven't seen it, but I'm gonna assume it's gonna be a combination of both and suspension is, is, is definitely key with our build. Where we're trying to go is, you know, lightweight chassis as well as a great handling car. And I believe that we can perform well with it. Without, without the proper suspension, without the proper alignment, all you're gonna do is slide around and it becomes really dangerous. And by adjusting the suspension, you can get the most rear grip as possible. You can make the car easier to drive by adding more steering angle. So there's less chance of you, you know, spinning out. But basically we can make the most out of our 400 to 450 horsepower by getting the maximum amount of grip we can out of our suspension. And then adjusting our driving style to suit what we build the car into. All right, there used to be a motor right here in this spot. Now it's just a rear end. Going from back to front, man. Nice. I don't, I don't recall this being part of your plans for today. Uh, I mean, Alex has been doing a great job on the fab end. Next thing was to start taking apart the rear end. Our plan for the rear end is to change the gearing. Now we found out that this gearing is like super, super geared. Like this is a 2.7 gear. Whoa. So if we want to do like 300 miles an hour on like a six or seven <laughs> speed, it's probably possible. For what we're doing, that gear is just not good enough. So we right. went ahead and we already got a, a 410 gear that we're going to swap in it. While we're doing that, we're also going to weld it as well. So. Is that it right there? That's it right there. Is so. that used or new? Uh, definitely used. Okay. Yeah, this is what came out of it so far. But the gear we ordered is brand new. We got it from eBay for I think like 120 or like what? 180 bucks. Super cheap. And look how beefy this thing is. I know, that looks, th that's cool. So we're gonna go ahead and slap them bad boys on there. While there's downtime on the engine, let's go ahead and soup up our diff, make it bulletproof, and uh, you know, 410 gears go fast. I never welded today. It's the end of the day, yeah. build and battle, soupy sweeping up. Awesome. The cleanest bay I think I've seen in any of these series. Soupy, how are you feeling about this so far? We're good, we're good. I think we did good today. We got the diff welded up, the main hoop for the cage is all well, uh, not welded, it's bent up. There it is, that was, that was the beginning of no way! <laughs> What's up, man? Look at this oh, reunion look, look, right look, here. Look, 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 look. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, thanks for coming up. Yeah. Hasn't seen dude for 15 years or something. Comes yeah. out. Comes out burrito, burrito in the hand. This guy got taller. He got a little, yeah, he got a little. Yo, if you get done fast enough, we'll just, I'll pull the Audi around. Stop. <laughs> we'll just get hey. to work. Soupy, what did I say? <laughs> Don't let this man <laughs> scam you into working on any of his vehicles. This, this, was, this was, uh, this is true. But yeah, man, it's so far so good. So uh, hopefully tomorrow we get the motor in the morning. He's gonna, uh, we're gonna test fit it and then he's gonna start putting it together. Nice, solid. Looking forward to that. Let's talk about the third gen though. Yeah. Let's talk about the third gen. It's pretty damn cool. 
So what else you guys got going on today from uh, last I checked in? Um, let me see. I was still working on the diff. Alex was working on the top hats for the coilovers still. And then I kind of took Alex off of the suspension to weld up the diff for me. And then I was still waiting on engine parts, uh, like, you know, just gaskets, little odds and ends that I just didn't think about. Um, also waiting on uh, lifters. So I decided to go with not using the stock lifters and using like some aftermarket lifters because just the weak link of these motors are the lifters. So it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of basic things. Right. And that wraps it for day two, building battle season three. These dudes are putting in work on either side. Still waiting on a bunch of parts. Still early in the build process, so not too many issues, but we'll uh, check back with these dudes tomorrow. Hopefully we get some engines mocked up. What's happening, Hoonigan viewers? We all know that commercials suck, and you don't want them in the middle of your content. But guess what? Car stuff's expensive. So to offset some of that cost and keep this content free for you, we've partnered with Honey. What is Honey, you might ask? Honey is a free browser extension that automatically saves you money when you shop online. So it knows about every coupon code, sale, or discount at over 20,000 sites online. So for example, recently we had to buy some parts for one of our other builds we had going on here. We had to pick up some MSD wires, an ignition box, a k and oil filter, along with some oil to do the oil change. And because of Honey, we actually saved $24.25 on the purchase without doing anything because it just found the codes for us. Hey! Don't lick the saws off, bro. So look, there's really no reason not to use Honey. It's free to use and it's easy to install on your computer in just two clicks. So shop with confidence. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash hoonigan. Save yourself some money. That's joinhoney.com slash hoonigan. Thanks again to Honey for sponsoring this video so we can keep doing dumb stuff. Let's hear you talk professional here. Yeah. Hey guys, this is day three on the building battles over here. <laughs> you know? Man, see, you can do it. Yeah. Look at that. My, 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 my followers, right this is what I do, you know? This is what I do. This is what I do. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. You know, you just slap this shit on. You know, there's no shimming. You just slap it on, press it in, throw it in there. And, okay, and this shit is going to go. Now, if you want to go 200 miles an hour, you use this. But if you want to drift and you want to go like sideways, you got to use this right here. You know, it's cool. It's cool. This shit's got to be some badass drift car right here. Look at this. Oh yeah. Yo, what is this? Was this your lower control arm? Or upper? This looks like my son's toy. We gotta work, man. We gotta work. Uh, we gotta work. Yo, put we this work. shit down, let's go. Put this shit down. back here on set same episode different day sun in my eyeballs let's check out the progress what up y'all Ron, what's happening man how, how y'all doing, doing? just got our diff all welded up Damn. got our new ring on there check yeah, that got out got the new ring gear on there nice we were gonna plate this but uh -huh. the thing is with the c-clip axles if we plate it we can't get the c-clips in wow so the c-clip yeah. the c-clip is accessible only through here only through here not through here they got the bible today if they run into I hear you guys have a Bible. There's some, there's some kind of Bible. I don't know what he's talking about. Hold on, they got a sneaker here somewhere. Hold on. Wait, Hold you on. Don't use anything for reference? No. What kind of ancient builder are you? <laughs> it's called experience. <laughs> oh, it's called experience? experience? Oh, here we go. Here we go. How to build an LS series engine. I'm not bad at that, Jamo. Really? Yeah. Uh, I thought these guys were pros. Jamo, get back to work. Get back to work. Now that I got my fabricator, fabricator, knowing how to weld, we got this. Alex, I see you mocking up a little uh, suspension mounts here. Yeah, looking at the challenge for the day, we got quite a job on our hands. So definitely have to cut these off, 
probably gonna end up shortening this tube drill some new holes in them, spread them. It, this is a big job. Sound like a way, way bigger job than just taking material uh, away from the sides here. Definitely don't want to do that. that. Really? It, yeah, I definitely don't want to do that because we're going to get a much stronger part altogether if we widen these. Are you thinking already about angle kits or anything like that? Shortening um, the knuckles? Yeah, yeah, I looked at it. Um, we'll definitely shorten this knuckle. We'll try to keep the Ackerman in check, but um, just shorten the knuckle, make a new uh, lower control arm, and we should be able to get some nice angle out of this car. And these mounts, these are prototypes or these are finished product? No, these are just about done. I'll probably drill some more holes here for, for more adjustment. camber adjustment. Because uh, I don't, slotting it's gonna be really difficult, so just drill more holes, not a big deal. We're gonna need a lot of room for that wheel to move you know, back and forth. And then as far as the rear suspension goes, are you gonna have to go this in depth into redesigning oh, stuff in the back too? Definitely not. Literally just gonna take these arms, just plop them on the bench, and just gonna make, we're just gonna make these solid. We are lowering it, but I think our rod ends are gonna give us enough, to, enough adjustment to compensate for the different changes in the geometry we're gonna give us okay. from lowering the car. So, so. I'm still waiting for my motor. The suspension is installed. The rear is done. So where are you getting your adjustment from? Not nothing oh. from the top hat or from the top. That'd be the dampening. The rear is cool. They give you a remote. Uh... Oh, I got you. Yeah, because usually this will be coming up through the seats and whatever. Yes. So you can't be taking your car apart every time uh, you want to change. Yeah. Uh, on some applications, I'm sure you could get to it in the rear. And you're still planning on doing something with these arms here? If we have time, I'm yeah. gonna have my. Uh, so-called fabricator, <laughs> you know, uh, make me a uh, arm. Where is, wait, what's he even doing out here? I don't, I don't even see him working. So, this is the old school way of doing stuff. Oh, okay. So you guys are now, you got your crossbar here. Yes. Now you're just trying to do that support bar, harness bar. Yeah, I was like, you know, I don't know, Supi used to be a painter too. That's how you got the painter's tape. <laughs> so we got the painter's tape on. <laughs> But yeah, man, that tape right there. Do a little trick. Just you follow guys, it, center yep. it. Center it on the tape, and there you go. Easy. Easy. On right One, two, here. three. Let's see. Some heavy rotors. I think rotors. these are the rotors, dude. See how it goes. Oh, those are nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a direct tip. Did you uh, remove the old drum brakes? Are you sure? Okay, good. Check one. moment of truth. It's one of the most exciting parts of this build right Severely now. Severely interesting. Severely interesting. The K20's here. K24. Oh, I was hearing K20 for a little bit. I was hearing Grumlings K24. What did this come out of? This came out of a Honda Accord in Japan, which is uh, basically the Acura TSX here. That's a little different from the Honda Accord engine here. The head different. Uh, the variable cam is a little different. We're going to change the rods out. We're going to change the pistons out. Um, because the K24 has a tendency, if you put any boost to them, they'll kick a ride out the side, it'll make a nice little hole there. I think this motor in Japan is 11 and a half to one. Wait, in a fam yeah. 11 and a half to one yeah. in a family in a sedan? Family sedan. This thing's 11 what do they run, 100 octane at the pump? Yep, yep, that's what they do. But for us, because we're going to be running some boost, we're going to try to lower that to 10 and a half to one. And we're going to run E85, so that, that should solve our, our uh, heat problems. That sounds like that's gonna be a spicy little combo. Jamo! What? Sorry, I, I keep interrupting. Yo, your motor showed up. Yeah, I got the mechanic working on it. <laughs> well, I start, I'm fabricating how to fit a Hulkite pump. Plastic fab. Plastic fab. Plastic fab. You're gonna get to that K24 today, or are you trying to do that tomorrow? Tomorrow will be the breakdown. Today, we're gonna do the test fit. Okay. Uh, I'd rather let him use a complete 
before I tear it down. Soup, did this come? Oh! Sorry, bro. Kyle! Dude, that glue was not dry yet. Man, I'm hyped to see this. You guys get to mock this thing up today. Yeah. It, That's it, a big step. By, uh, by end of day, this is gonna be in the car. Which is two things, a couple of things we're gonna do. We're gonna crank over this motor and make sure that that flywheel, the teeth, uh, Match with matches that with that starter that we got. And then we're gonna make sure it, that tranny fits on to this, okay, this right. plate. You want to see a start on the floor? You want to see this shit start right now? We're slapping a carburetor right on this. Did they know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you... relax. We just testing the flywheel. Make sure it works. Done. Welded diff. 410 gear swap. The disc brake conversion done. I ran into that big bump in the road with like everything being shifted over this way, and I really had to modify those brackets, but. You know, is what it is. That's what happens when you run into problems. Is it the right way that I did it? No, I'll put this thing off to the side. Alex will still be working on the suspension. I'll take that stock tank out and then move it and get that brand new aftermarket fuel cell in then. Ready, go. Right there? Really? I'll take the, the, the pan. 45. 45 it here, and then I'll just match the, I'll just section the, um, the cradle. Take all your measurements right now, because I, I once it. this motor comes out, I got it. I can't believe it fits over the rack without like cutting half the oil pan apart. There you have The first K motor in a 350Z, I think. Fuel cell time. Got that sucker. Already mocked up, you know, I'll weld something that comes up to here and grabs these. But this, I'm just gonna drill a hole through there and bolt it that way. It also, the top, fit just like that. Simple, what do you think, Alex? How do you like that fuel cell placement? I, I love it. It's a beautiful fuel cell. I love that eBay fuel cell. Yeah, 89 bucks, dude. Alex saw my original mock-up and he didn't like it. I love the technique, brother. I love it. Look at that clearance, dude. That's friggin' perfect. Alex wanted me to cut it and I was like, nah, hammer. He just walked away. Now all I gotta do is weld some little tabs, bolt it up, done. So that about wraps it up for today. The boys have put in a lot of work. Let's review what they've gotten done so far. I got I got some budgets here, Josh. Oh no. Y'all boys been budgeting? My head, kinda sorta. You're a 9181. 9181. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's that a bad. So you still <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you think you might have to start selling some stuff now? I mean, we already put like this stuff up for sale. Wiring harness that came off the motor with the ECU and the manifold is for sale. Let me see, I had two bites on the uh, wiring harness. Trying, trying to sell as much as I can. Yo, Alex. Yo, what's up? <laughs> that was the most suave yo, what's up ever. How's that suspension looking today? Oh, dude, it's looking solid. Made a lot of progress on that thing. I got one of them bolted up here. Okay. I took the knuckle out, but the knuckle fit up real nice. You can get an idea of where it's gonna sit now. So. Okay. Now I can go ahead and start working on that lower control arm. We also got our diff all done, ready to go. And you got and, the brake set up all squared away? Set up squared away. Plans for tomorrow um, while 
Alex was still working on those links. I was cleaning up the inside, getting it all prepped up, ready for a cage. I'm gonna cut these out first thing in the morning for our A-pillars so we can also get a dash bar in there. We're definitely gonna be doing a like full cage. So A-pillar, hoop, and C-pillars. It's not really like eliminating the flex, but I'm sure it's helping. And then it's kind of balancing out some weight a little bit. What do you say, Jamo? Where are you guys at right now? How are you feeling? Oh, for great. Whoa! You got, you got the front end back on. The diff the, is back up. The diff is back up. The suspension is done. done. Main hoop is done, though. Look at that. Yeah, the main hoop is done. Ancient techniques. I don't see no Bondo, though. Huh? <laughs> JB Wells no, there. JB. No JB? Let's talk about budget real quick oh, because your motor came in. I see some new parts on there. I see fittings. Do you know where you're at on budget? 8594. Oh. Y'all are chilling. But have you guys considered? I heard from both of you. You guys aren't necessarily drivers. Yeah. Meaning meaning like Jim Connor grid style, drift, like yes. that kind of stuff. Yes. So do you guys have it in the books to maybe hire a driver? Maybe. <laughs> I feel like that's a no. That's a no, I don't know how much money we'd have left. All you gotta do is you gotta tell them, hey man, do you wanna drive the world's first K-swapped 350Z in Gymkhana grid? If you say it like that, maybe we should charge rental. Uh, oh! Huh? Huh? If you want to drive, I gotta first, respect that hustle. I gotta respect that hustle. Motor Jim Connor car. You, if you can, bucks an hour. There if you, you can find someone to pay you to drive this thing in the challenge, I will be impressed. I'll be stoked. Okay. All right. I think that's a good idea, Super. All right. That's a lot of progress, honestly, for just being three days in. Not necessarily visually at times, because you may think that this isn't as far along as that, but. There's a lot more prep work going on here. It's it's all kind of hard to tell at this point, but check out the budgets, see where they're at, and then we're gonna catch back up with these guys in the next episode. We got some trouble here too. What? Oh my. Today, hopefully by the end of the day, we get this motor back together, maybe back in the car. Dude, no AC. No AC compressor and no AC? How you get me a motor with no AC, man? <laughs>